chapter 5. Let's read from 37. I'm assuming on 37, chapter 37, 5. Yes. And the Father who sent me has himself testified about me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form. You do not have his word, scripture, abiding in you. Actually, living in your hearts and minds, because you don't believe in him who has sent. You search and keep on searching and examine the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life and yet it is those very scriptures that testify about me and still you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life verse 41 I do not have I do not receive glory and approval from men but I know you and recognize that you do not have the love of God in yourselves. I have come in my Father's name with his power and you do not receive me because your minds are closed. But if another comes in his own name and with no authority or power except his own, you will receive and give your approval to an imposter. How can you believe in me when you receive, when you seek and receive glory and approval from one another? And yet you do not seek the glory and approval which comes from one and only God. Do not think that I'm the one who will accuse you before the Father. There already is one who accuses you, Moses, the very one in whom you have placed your hope for salvation. For if you believe and relied on the scripture written by, for he wrote about me personally, but if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my ways? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I was reading the scriptures I found. I mean, the heart of Jesus. Jesus faced a lot by his time of the ministry. Here, he was addressing the leaders of the church. That the leaders of the church were searching scriptures and keep on searching. But they could not come to a revelation of knowing God. Have you ever find that you are reading scripture but you don't have a revelation of your father God? These are the people who are preaching the gospel. What more the followers? If you read this one, I want to show you something. Verse 38, Jesus said, if 38, you do not have his word abiding in you, in the Amplified Bible it says, in the mind and heart. Therefore, how can you believe me that God has sent? 39, he says, but you search and keep, you search Keep on searching. And and you know, this makes me to say, let me talk about let's love God. The love of God. Just write the love of God. Because Jesus said, these people they keep on searching scriptures. 
But the scriptures does not make them to see God as he is. If they can see God as he is, they will love him. And they will understand that the love of God is manifested through Christ in them. Look at verse, verse 42. He says, but I know you. And recognize that you do not have the love of God in yourselves. When Jesus looked at them, he can see that there was no love of God in them. You know, when I read this, I remember when uh, Paul tells Timothy that people in the last day they will have a form of goldiness. There will be actions of showing they know God. But whereas they have denied him. Not long I found that whatever we are doing now is no longer for God. We are doing it for our names. We need to be recognized. We need to give each other's glory. Here, you see, he said, I could, I'm not saying this to accuse you. You were supposed to be knowing the revelation of me from the scriptures. But you keep on searching scriptures that don't bring you to the love of God. I found that we are lacking the love of God in us. Because the love of God shapes our character. There are things that we cannot do when we love God. Tell me, there are things that we will never do. The reason is because we love God. I don't know if you hear me. There are things that we will never do. The reason is because we love God. If you love God already, you are destined on the righteousness of God. If you love God, there are things that when they come your way, you say, no, I can't do this. Because searching of the scriptures take you to the revelation of Christ. And the revelation of Christ shows the love of God that you have been given on you. I don't know if you're hearing me. The searching of scriptures must tell you that God has loved you through Christ. And now if Christ has come because of the love of God for you, your character is bound to change. You cannot live like you don't know God. So here, that's what this man was saying. He, he was just a man before them. They, they could not even understand they were facing Messiah. They could not even have interpretation of him. This is the thing that is even happening today. We are failing to understand who's speaking and who's not speaking. If we read 1 Corinthians 8 verse 3, it shows that if verse 3, but 8 verse 3, chapter 8 verse 3, it says, but if anyone love God, if you love God, you are known by God. In other words, our love for God establish our relationship with Him. If really you know God, you are known by Him. Our relationship began when we loved Him. In the last days, the, the thing that will be questioned is how far are you with the relationship with your him? Your activities you do shows the fruits of your relationship with him. 
how you relate with him is from the love of God you. How do we know that we, you love God? If we read 1 John chapter 4, we read verse 20. Just read, the Bible says, you cannot say you love God when you hate your brother. In the Amplified Bible it says, when you love God, you cannot work against your brother. Can you read verse 20? If someone says, I love God uh -huh. and I hate his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Just repeat that verse and read again. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who has not loved his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? The maturity of your Christian life is determined by how you act towards your brother. Oh, how. Therefore, the way, when your brother challenges you, you are responsible to your maturity in the love of God. Therefore, it means you will never quench the challenges. If you quench the challenges, it means there is no more temptation. Therefore, you are no longer a Christian. If there is no more temptations, you are no longer a Christian. So all the challenges you are facing towards your brother, brought by your brother, they are there to challenge the love of God. In you. So for you to stand tall and carry on in the righteousness of God, determine your maturity in the things of God. The love of God in you will always be challenged. When you are praying, you'll be challenged to stop praying. Because if you love God, you will say, I will not look at the challenge. challenge. If, if you worship, you'll be challenged to stop worship. Whatever you do, you will be challenged. I don't know if you're hearing me. The moment you see challenges coming to you, maintain the love of God in you. Maintain it. Make sure that you don't lose the love of God. I love when the Bible says Jesus recognized. I say when I look at you, I recognize. In other words, you could see them in spirit. Listen, if we cannot see people in spirit, we are in danger. Because the love of God will always fluctuate. I don't know if you hear me. How far is the love of God in you? Is it not fluctuating? Because when money is not there, it fluctuates. Sickness, when it comes, it fluctuates. it fluctuates. So you need to maintain it. Because it's the love of God in you that takes you to where God wants you to be. It's not people. It is the love of God in you that takes you to where God is. It's not people. I mean, let's take away our eyes from people. We put our lives in the scripture that so that we understand the full love of God. So how do we know? We know that we cannot work against each other. Number two, in 1 John 5, 2, by obeying the commandments, when he instructs us, we obey. 
First John 5, 2. John 5, 2. Chapter 5, verse 2. Chapter 5, verse 2. When you obey commandments, it's because of the love of God, we'll do it even when it's impossible. Like myself, I travel from here to USA. Of the commands. Of the commands. I, it was bad for me. Because I have to go five weeks. I don't want to be separated with my wife. <laughs> and, and my wife, my wife she doesn't want to travel. <laughs> she will tell me that she will be left with the child. It was, but when God said, go to USA, I said, and I said, I said okay, I will go. But go there, I will go. So therefore, the commandments, you obey them because you love God. Even when you have good interests. Sometimes, you know, devil will show you your interests. Some things that will come up to make you to stop doing what God wants you to do. Not only that in commands, temptations. Like, you know what is happening to me around you. Satan can tempt you not to raise other people. Because of other people who have got their desires. So it's temptations and desires determine how far you obey the commandments. Therefore, there's no history in obeying commandments. When God commands you, you don't look back. You don't question where you come from. And say, no, that one failed me. Even another one can fail me. So you carry on doing it because whatever you are doing, you are doing it for God. You are not doing it for him. So your obedience is the reflections of the love of God in you. Can you tell anybody, obedience is the reflections of the love of God in you. I want to tell you something. When God tested Abraham, when he tested Abraham, he said, Abraham, go to Mountain Moriah. But he chose the best. He said, take Isaac, not Ishmael. If God said to Abraham, Ishmael, Abraham, ah. Ishmael, you know, Abraham will just say, thank Abraham you, Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. You, you know, he will just say, Ishmael, nah, Ishmael. let's go. Hari. When in the road days, when Abraham he ask, ah, when he say, no, what, who's, what, 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 what are we going to offer? <laughs> Abraham will not even ask. Abraham will not even ask. Abraham answer. Answer. You know, he answer Isaac. And he answer Isaac. 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 The law will provide. But if it was Ishmael, when he said, what are we going to offer? He said, thank you, Jesus. Thank thank you. Thank you. Because he knows he doesn't lose anything. We love to give thanks to God because we, you know, we are not affected. That's why maybe the Bible says we must sow in tears. Because obedience required our heart. Out. It challenges our hearts. Now, I don't know if you are hearing me. Tell somebody say, hey, obedience, it challenges you. And ask you questions before you act. You will feel pain before you act. Your maturity in obedience is checked in the pain you feel before you act. Sometimes God will allow you to do something that costs you pain. And you realize, I, I cannot do it. I felt pain. If I carry on doing it, I felt pain. I won't do it. You stop. And when you stop, you are stopping your promotion. I don't know if you are hearing me. The moment
moment when I realized that I felt pain, I began to see better people, smarter people, bigger people that God will raise from the one who rejected. I don't know if you are hearing me. I began to sense bigger breakthrough from the smaller breakthrough I had. Listen, the love of God will take you there. I see the love of God taking you there. From a bigger breakthrough, bigger success, bigger success that is coming your way. I see you testify. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Let me show you by the life of Jesus. You will understand that truly uh, what Jesus was facing was no good. Let's read Luke 22. Luke 22. Luke 22. We read verse 47. Verse 47. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you just read 47? And while he was still speaking, behold a multitude, and he who was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man? With a kiss, when those around him say what was going to happen, they, dis they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them stuck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus answered and said, permit even this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priest, captains of the temple and the elders who had come to him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Let's stop there. I want us to analyze what we have read now. These are two men that were supposed to be tempted Jesus in his last ministry. Judas and Peter. Judas and Peter were very close to Jesus. The first one that you know, uh, Jesus was supposed to have reacted. I want to show you by what I'm saying. I mean, you know this man has betrayed you and you know your revelation. If this man is bringing the mouth here, the first thing to give this man was a hot clap. You know, remember that Jesus, he said, no one take my life. I'm the one who laid it down. And I'm doing this because I, I, I love God. The love of Jesus to God was supposed to be tempered there by the temptation he was facing the last minute. The man is bringing the mouth and it's, it's a kiss. This was the nightmare temptation. If it is me, I was supposed to have and say, you, you think, I don't know myself. I, I knew you before I chose you. I don't know if you're hearing me. But, but Jesus, look at this man. He, he agreed. But, but this head is here. This head is here. It could not come here. Uh, I mean, if it was you, you would just say, one, I don't know if you're hearing me. When Jesus Agree the kiss. Peter. Petro. 
Peter, the man who followed Jesus. Other people are running away. He wanted to see the end of Jesus. You know, there are some people who follow us until they want to see the end of it. He went to Malchus. And cut the ear. Bam. Jesus said, no, this is not what I teach. And if it becomes contrary to what I teach, I'm not learning the love of God. And this can stop the plan of God. Because I love God, I must fulfill God's will. If you love God, you will do the will of God. You will do the will of God. Look what happened. He went there and touched the ear. And said, hey, do not, do not stop this. It is allowed. This is the dark hour. In other words, my father has accepted and I must go through this. Don't stop this. You know, when I was reading that, I began to think, how many times we try to stop things by prayer? Do you know there are some things we need just to allow them? We carry on with the love of God. And establish the love of God in us. We stop fasting for a prayer. Stop praying to change the situation. We carry on with the love of God. Fellowshipping with Christ. And that will break the reason. I don't know if you're hearing me. Listen to this. There are things that happens to you. There are many people that devil is using to stop the plan of God. You need to know if they are not tempting you. To stop the plan of God upon your life. Because this can happen in the last minute. It happened in the last minute. In the life of Jesus. He could not strike Judas. He could still heal the enemy. He could still heal the person. Who was there to arrest him. So that he faced the cross. Because he knew after the cross there was resurrection. I'm praying so that you must not fail. In the last minute. I say in the last hour. They have to be the last hour of darkness. The last hour of darkness is there. Because the promotion is coming. The last hour of darkness is there. Because the purpose of God is about to be fulfilled. So fear nothing. Because you are about to go where God wants you to be. If you believe, shout hallelujah. As somebody say, my friend, which hour are you? Are you not in the last hour? And are you aware of this hour? Let's read Romans 8, verse 35 to 39. The Bible says we are surrounded by situations. But those situations are there to take the love of God in us. But if we understand the love of God, nothing will separate us with his love. Can you just read verse 35, Mama? Yeah, verse 35. Yes. Romans 8, verse 35. Yes. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Mm -hmm. Shall tribulation, tribulation or distress, distress or persecution, persecution or famine or nakedness, nakedness, or peril, peril or sword. Short. Can you hear those things? Read them again. I want you to check, you to check what you are facing now. Number one. Number one. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall uh, tribulation, tribulation, or distress, distress, or persecution, persecution, or famine, famine or nakedness, nakedness, or peril, peril or sword? Short. Ask your neighbor, which one are you facing? Tell your neighbor to answer you. 
The love of God in you can attract this. I want to talk about famine. The love of God in you can attract famine. I'm just choosing famine. I know this issue of persecution fairly short. But I'm choosing famine. You know, by the time of famine, there's no abundance. Abundance. You take life the way it is. Many of you are facing famine. The way things are, you take them the way they are. The clothes you dress is because you don't have others. The, the clothes you have dressed today, you even thought about them on Sunday that you dress them on Wednesday. But when there's no famine, you don't know what to dress because there are many. I mean, whatever you have today, if you lose it, you are poor. Whatever you have now is just to push you for a year to come. But that's what the Bible says, but we cannot be separated in the love of Christ. We still carry on even though it's like that. We still carry on loving Christ, Christ, obeying Christ with the capacity we have in Him. Your availability in His presence demand you to act when He speaks before. And when you are doing that, you don't care how what you are lacking who rejected you who's fighting you whatever you are facing your account is empty the love of God takes you to the destiny of God if, if you believe say amen if you believe say amen therefore as Christians there are things we don't need to pray against. I'm just thinking about if I might have prayed against some people. By this time, I was supposed to be so much offended. Because every day I must prove a point. This one this is, I prove a point. This one, I prove a point. This one. But you know, when God qualifies you sometimes, He gives you strength when people think you'll be weak. You, you find you've got so strength that, that people can question. But <laughs> when I'm saying this, I'm just reminded of my younger brother. <laughs> he was called by another man and said, Ah. Your brother is a Christian. He went through all this. He's still preaching. I said to me, all these things is like a dream. Because God has already destined me to where I'm going. The love of God may open your eyes to see the future. And when you persist, you don't care what is happening and surrounding you. No one can shake you. You were supposed to be questioning why these things to one man. The love of God takes you forward. Let me prophesy someone. I see you going to where no one will never think. Your enemies will wander. They will see you going far. I say they will see you taking what belongs to you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. So nothing can separate you. Look at this scripture that I want to give. Maybe I will close. Maybe I can close. I don't know. First Corinthians 
First Corinthians 16, 14. Corinthians 16, 14. These scriptures are so powerful that I'm giving you. Read for me verse 14. First Corinthians 16, 14. First Corinthians 16. Can we read 14? Verse 14. Yes, it says where well, it says, let all that you do be done with love. I, I want to amplify the Bible. Amplify Bible. Let all you do, you do with love. All you do, you do with love. Who's having amplified Bible? Let me read for you. Keep yourself in the love of God. No. It says everything you do must be directed and motivated and inspired by God. It's love for us. Inspired, directed, motivated. In other words, before you do things. Judge them before. You do them. Check if it's God's love. I don't know if you're hearing that. Check that what you're doing. Are you doing it out of God's love? It must be directed. Before you insult your neighbor. You check, is it God love? Uh, I can go out and insult. Is it God's love? If I can go okay, out and insult. Let me gossip my neighbor. Okay, is, is, is it, if you check that, you'll be perfect. The problem is you don't check. You are controlled by emotions. And emotions, I mean, invite spirits. And you find out you are possessed. And I told you, no, had to let you. Later, you are going to ask for forgiveness. I have never finished. I've done this also. You know. I was not supposed to have done this. Oh, I've done this. It was my anger. Go oh, deal with my anger. Oh, when I'm angry, I just. I just run my mouth everywhere. Sorry, sorry Lord. So, Papa, sorry, Lord. I was not supposed to have said this. So everything you must check if it's God's love. Even myself, before I preach here, I said, God, you want me to preach about God's love in us. I must make sure that it has not, people I'm preaching to, they must not correlate it with another thing that has happened. Because if, if it happens that way, it's not how God's love. I don't know if you're hearing me. So God's love thing for others. You don't, you put yourself in the position of those ones you are acting against. What are they going to feel? If I would feel bad, I won't do it. I just remember one time my late spiritual father said, if something happened in the church and you're and you find that you get the message you are going to preach about. And you find the message is concerning the same thing. Pray, Pray and jump it out. You, you will preach it one day. Because it will provoke and an affection. affect affection. And God's love in you and, and them will be affected. So always you have to be conscious of the God. Conscious of of a, be conscious so that you must not offend other people. So God's love in them must not be affected by you. I don't know if you're hearing me. If you want to do that, you know, don't 
be close to the people that offend you. Because you will respond. Don't be close to the people who are offending you. Yeah. Very soon you will respond. And it affects God's life. It's better you shut them. Tell somebody to say, my friend, <laughs> everything must be directed <laughs> by God's love in <laughs> you. So if you are not right to come out and speak with people, don't come out. If you're not feeling good that <laughs> you can come out and answer people, because we do here in the pulpit, we don't talk about people. We talk about God's love to people. So if now you're offended, you stand in the pulpit and talk about other people. You are a liar when you say you love God. So this is the time that you people must know. It's only God's love in you that will take you to your destiny. It's only God's love in you that will raise you. Look here, how you pray is how you love God. How you give, whatever you are doing, any activities you are doing, it's how you love God. People who love God cannot be pushed to pray. They want to be lonely and go and pray outside there or pray wherever they can pray. No one can push them. I pray that today the love of God in you will grow. I say it must grow in the name of Jesus. I say it must grow in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to grow? In the love of God. Let me just give you one scripture before we close. Right. Read Jude 1. Jude 1. If we can read Jude 1, you will see that verse. Jude 1. Verse 14. Just go there. Let's read verse 21. Revelation verse 21. We know that the love of God in Christ makes us not to be disappointed. Amen. The love of God gives us hope, but verse 21 says what? Jude. Jude. One. Let me read for you. Can, can you read, Mama? You got it? It says, Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. I want to read that in Amplified. It says, And keep yourself in the love of God, waiting exactly, waiting exactly. Looking forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, which will bring to you to eternal life. Amen. The love of God in us is a key of whatever we are expecting from God. Tell you about the love of God in us is a key of whatever we are expecting from God. The love of God. It becomes a key. When we have it, the mercy of God will work for us in anything that he has promised to come to us. Therefore, if you want to see that God will never give you anything, is when, when you are tempered in the love of God. If you, if you want to see all the people that God is using mightily, oh, who are God known, they love God so much. They love God so much. They love God so They love God so much. They love God so much. They love They love God so much. God so much. They love God so much. They love God so much. God so much. They love God so much. They love God so God so much. They love God so much. God so much. God so much. so much. They love God so much. They God so much. They love Unfortunately, our, the love of God in us is affected. 
And most of the time when we are challenged, sickness, we question if God loves us. No, God through the Holy Spirit has poured the love of God in us in our hearts. Romans 5 verse 5. So the, the Holy Spirit has been poured and brought love in our hearts. So there's no one who's expecting something. That person will receive it if he doesn't have it. So the love of God must be like boom. So because even faith works by the love of God. Everything works by the love of God. If you want to receive something, love of God first. Faith will come. Everything will come. Everything so you cannot say I have faith when you don't have the love of God. The actions you do are showing the love of God you are showing to the one you are requiring what you want to receive from him. I'm very happy for you. But let's go and check the love of God. Tell him about check the love of God in you. Can you tell your neighbor, check the love of God in you. God bless you.